Hello, I'm Lexbrush. And Ember. This is our thoughts on episodes 7 and 8 of Sailor Moon Crystal. Well, both of these episodes are really good, especially the last one. And this one was just, oh, backstory. Backstory's always good. Yes, we finally learned why Tuxedo Mask has been searching for the legendary silver crystal. And we learn how Queen Metallia escaped. Yes. We also find out that Queen Barrel is the classic secondary villain to the main villain of I'm going to get it for myself. <laughs> well, considering that she kind of unwillingly let Queen Metallia free, I'd be tempted to do that too. <laughs> I wouldn't be going for the whole world domination thing, but I'd be going, I take it for myself and now I'm free. Yes, but world, world domination is just so much more fun. And work! <laughs> <laughs> and so sad to get Mamoru's backstory. Though, I love the way they do the animation for the flashbacks. You know, just giving him that slightly grainy feel. Hmm, I didn't notice that, but I did like um, the way they stylized certain parts of it, too. It, it was very flashbacky, and they isolated him by, like, doing certain animation tricks to make him separate from everything else, so he felt isolated, like, I don't know who I am. <laughs> Oh yeah, but I'm talking about both flashback scenes, Mamoru's and Queen Barrel's. They just had that different animation style that made it at one remove from what we're actually watching. And, you know, Usagi is very calm for waking up in a strange man's room in a strange man's bed. <laughs> for those who find Mamoru creepy, there were more points in episode 7 for him being creepy. Oh dear, this girl passed out. I'll take her back to my place. <laughs> it's kind of a Raphael Ninja Turtles moment. You know, I thought I'd decorate. Throw Couple pillows, of throw pillows, TV news, news reporter. Order. What do you think? <laughs> hmm. Uh, <laughs> you know, I thought I'd redecorate a sailor scout. Couple of throw pillows. Oh, and secretly, she's a princess. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but just the dynamic and the tension between the two of them. They're really handling that pretty well, in my opinion. I like how this thing's flowing overall, and it feels like it's going just as fast as the manga felt when I was reading it. Because I remember how long and stretched out that the original animation was, and it, I, I was okay with that, because I was getting lots of stuff, but then I read the original manga, I went, well, I'm already here? <laughs> wow, that was quick. <laughs> Yeah, the manga is very fast-paced. Another thing I liked in episode 7 was the three-way screen split for Mars, Jupiter, and Mercury transforming. Yeah, I like how they're being efficient with that and still reusing animation. Mm-hmm. I understand reusing animation, you know, budget. If you make something shiny enough, you want to use it more than once. But it's nice to see that they're not just, here we go, five minutes of transformation sequences filler. Uh, yeah, so we cut out all the story just to show you animations of transforming magical girls. Uh, okay, that's an idea for a TV series. I'm sure there's probably already a website that is nothing but strung together sequences of magical girl transformations. <laughs> and poor Tuxedo Mask, so powerless, can't protect the love of his life when Zoisite was about to kill her right in front of him. Yeah, at least he got a good right hook in. Mm-hmm. And he's like, how dare you? You punched me! I'm not letting that happen again. Barrier. <laughs> also, uh -huh. the Sailor Scout's attacking Zoisite while he's holding Sailor Moon. Are those attacks somehow not going to hurt Sailor Moon? They're kind of widespread attacks to pinpoint Zoisite only. I don't remember that, but yeah, I guess they had friendly fire turned off. Well, none of the attacks connected, thanks to Zoicide's dark energy shield, but still. Maybe they were ending, aiming for the shield, hoping it would break and their uh, attacks wouldn't hurt her. He didn't have the shield up until they shot at him. Hmm. That's a point I need to go back and look. <laughs> Actually, I'm probably going to rewatch all of these soon, just to make sure I have certain things straight in my head. But yeah, I like the fact that, well, I gotta punch it and then... I'm not doing a thing anymore. I'm so weak! I'm supposed to be this awesome guy called Tuxedo Mask! I've always been weak, haven't I? <laughs> yeah, well, Tuxedo Mask's powers are not particularly well suited to combat. He overall is better as a support unit. If he could 
tap into that later power and get the tuxedo less smoking bomber, we'd at least have an attack for him to call out. And they haven't even shown him at all with that rose. Like I said, I think it was maybe once in the first episode of this, but nope, no rose. Nothing like that at all. <laughs> yeah, well, if you recall in the manga, he wasn't exactly flinging roses around all the time. That was more of an anime thing. Yeah, I need to reread those as well. I need to read through all the set that I have. <laughs> and then on to episode 8. Oh, this is a very nice episode. Sailor V-Chan reveals herself to be both Sailor Venus and Princess Serenity. <laughs> yeah, when she said that, I actually went, I actually crossed my arms and went, eh, that's not right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, even back when I was originally watching the anime, I had trouble with that because like, okay, why would Sailor Venus be the princess of the Moon Kingdom? Even if we weren't seeing all the flashbacks through Mamoru and Usagi's dreams, you know, right there is enough to go, um, but you're Venus. Moon? Venus? No, Sailor Moon is the only Sailor Scout who's not named for a planet. I'm watching this going, I wonder if they could have hid this more, even though they're doing it for fans? Could they have hid this more so it was more of a mystery? Because... The ending credits for this and the flashbacks in this obviously point to those two and her being the princess. But is there a way they could have done it so it was like actually more hidden for the newer audience? Well, maybe it is more hidden for the newer audience. You know, we're looking at it with full knowledge. Hmm. Gonna have to find out by showing it to some people who don't know much about Sailor Moon. I wonder where we're gonna find those. <laughs> hmm. That's kind of like asking someone if they haven't played Tetris. They do exist. Uh, probably of the younger audience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but because even with it looking like with the flashbacks that Usagi is princess, that doesn't mean she's the princess. Mm -hmm. And the animation in this episode is pretty good. There's a lot of good stuff going on during the fight scenes and even the um, transformation scenes and the untransformation scene, the, like the reverse transformation, the demorphing as it were. <laughs> yes. That was very well done too. And then, you know, Venus... You see her shouldering a burden. You know, she's keeping herself separate from the team that she should be able to count on, both as a Sailor Scout and as the Princess Cough. Instead, she's trying to shoulder it alone, which, as always when shouldering something alone, it tends to not work in your favor. Because, hmm, look, your friend showed up anyways. Everyone's getting their asses kicked right now, but if you'd all started off together, maybe it might have gone better. Well, since we're moving on to that, the whole dynamic with her and how she's interacting with people and how she has that burden, and her whole dynamic with Artemis, too, really works out. And I like how he even walks up to Luna at one point and goes, well, we did erase some of your memories or hid them from you. As we're trying to ease your burden. Yeah, like that works. <laughs> Yeah, that sounds a lot like an author device. And if I caught it correctly, um, did Artemis say that Luna was um, like the guardian of Amaru? Artemis implied that Luna was the special escort slash guardian for someone important. Didn't come out and say who, because, oh gee, Luna's hanging out with Sailor Moon, who we are trying not to let everyone know is the princess who Luna is the escort for. Hmm. Well, I, I like how they're hinting to stuff like that. I really like the story flow so far, and the pacing in this episode was pretty good. It didn't feel rushed or anything. No, the question is how rushed is it going to feel next episode, between that cliffhanger and the next time on Sailor Moon Crystal. Oh yes, that, that, I, I see what you meant when you told me when you watched it first, like, damn it, why can't they show the episode sooner? Yeah, because it's like, ah, two weeks I gotta wait for that. <laughs> uh, and I'm like, I see what she means. I, I, I want to watch the next episode now. <laughs> Any other points you'd like to bring up about the episodes? Let's see, Minoko distancing herself too much, you brought up the detransformation, you know, the isolation in the battle, we have Tuxedo Mask going, I will protect her this time. Oh yeah, that scene was pretty awesome, because I like how he's like, wow, she keeps showing new sides to me every time, and then, uh oh, I must protect her this time, jump! I just suddenly saw his brain going, this might not have been the brightest idea I've ever had, <laughs> and then zap, yep, definitely not the brightest idea. <laughs> Kind of like that story about how people who jump off of buildings realize halfway through that it was a bad idea. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
in the next episode, it looks like we get that classic sequence of no, and then superpowers kick in. <laughs> you hurt my loved one. You 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 suffer pain now. Yeah, because that's the classic hero thing. You hurt me, no big deal. You hurt someone I care about, oh, you're going down. You will pay for your transgressions. Severely. And just going back to episode 7 briefly, because there was a great, you know, classic klutzy Usagi moment where she had the ketchup all over her face, coinciding with them talking about, well, maybe she has some sort of special power. <laughs> yep, those moments are nice. They really enforce the um, way the character is. And I like how Sailor Moon has definitely shown progress through all these episodes so far from being how she was in the first episode to being more serious to more focused in this episode. Also, I like the surprised face when Sailor Moon kissed Tuxedo Mask and he's like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Just the moment of, she, she kissed me and it was awesome. And I believe the last time he kissed her, she was unconscious or something. Yeah. Which goes back to more points for the people who find him creepy. <laughs> but I like how this one's like, wow, it's so much better when she was awake. <laughs> <laughs> and then we also had that sweet, cute moment where she offered him the watch back. And he's like, oh, you keep it for now. I have something of yours. We'll try it next time, okay? And she's like, but I didn't leave anything. What could he possibly have? <laughs> <laughs> Your reaction of, oh, what am I missing? <laughs> that was pretty awesome. So you would think that she would have realized much sooner that she's been missing her handkerchief since the night of the ball. Mm-hmm. But we're talking about Sailor Moon here. <laughs> I know. You would also think at the same time that a girl as klutzy and forgetful as Sailor Moon would have a mom who would buy her more than one handkerchief. <laughs> yeah, her mom probably has a whole drawer of either similar or the exact same handkerchief that goes, uh, she lost it again. Here you go. <laughs> Uh, and moving back to transformations real quick, I like the way they handled Venus's transformation. Mm -hmm. Although they didn't quite explain why she changed outfits. Because <laughs> they showed her in her original outfit when she was trapsing around on the rooftops, and then they go to this thing where, and then I discovered what was really behind things, and they didn't explain why she is now in her standard garb. Yeah, well, the manga doesn't actually really explain it either. So I think a lot of this was just because the two volumes of Sailor V came out first. I don't know if the author originally intended the longer series or if Sailor V was so successful she got approved for the longer series. And since Sailor V was Sailor Venus already, she needed to find a way to work that character in and, you know, bring her back as herself rather than creating a new Sailor Venus. Well, that makes sense. If you look at the original Sailor V manga, you can actually see Usagi and Naru in the backgrounds. I need to read that sometime. Overall, I liked both episodes. The pacing is picking up a little bit because we're approaching some type of either transition or climax of some sort. I like how Venus is the only one who seems to remember everything and she's supposed to get her job done before the others regain their memories. I also like the little hint of, you were once good! You were supposed to be good! Don't do this! And then... You're actually evil. Killer. Okay! <laughs> and I love the fact of Tixia Mask going, Well, I will save her this time. Jump! Ouch! That hurt! Bad idea. It looks like next episode. Uh-oh, Serena's going to do some whoop-ass. Yep, because as we've seen, she is very driven by emotion. So, very much enjoyed these two. You know, the exposition and flashbacks didn't feel overwhelming. We have good pacing. Things are definitely picking up because we are heading towards that final climax where the truth all comes out and we get to the final battle. Final being in air quotes because I'm sure this has been so popular we might be able to go into the next manga art based on the popularity. So I know they intended just a shorter season. Well, either way, I've enjoyed it so far. Thanks for listening. If you enjoy Lux's artwork, you can follow him on DeviantArt and Tumblr. Want to keep up to date with what we're doing with our videos? You can follow us on Tumblr. Really like Lux's artwork? Throw him a bone and maybe send him a commission request. Links in the description.